Hey, Brian, you there? Hey, Bill, how you doing? Great, how are you? I'm doing well. How was your day today? Well, we got a, a solid five inches of snow up here. I mean, I was at work till 1.30. So almost quarter to two, I guess. But we got five inches of snow up here today. Well, yeah, we um, got several inches here in Schuylkill County. Um, there's a... There's a I think it was a good call today then. To oh, yeah. 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 It was, I mean, it was coming down from uh, pretty darn good from uh, like 1030 or so till 3, 330. It was coming down solid. Yeah. Yeah, it stopped probably here about uh, about 3 o'clock. So that probably close to probably about five inches too. Uh, they're just plowing now. Um, the main roads are are not are not quite clear. The, the side roads are not clear yet. They're, they're just starting to plow out. So, um, I know we get a couple of days of uh, warm up, but they're already predicting more snow over the weekend and more snow for next week. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, it's, it's going to be quite the thaw. You know, too funny. I remember uh, years back, you know, where I was really into kayaking, we had a heck of a, a winter and all of us, a big storm. And then we got all this rain on top of it. And man, did we have some great days on the creeks. We really yeah, it's going to be uh, it's gonna be a good spring. Uh, lots of water. You know, it's um, it's coming. Yeah, you know, even and if we get some rain right now it, in uh, some warmer weather here, it's going to be a it's it's going to really push things up. Um, I, I know trout season opens early this year. Uh, April third is the statewide opener. It's an early opening, and uh, I know they're stocking fish now uh, yeah. for that for that time, and. Uh, you know, hopefully it's not going to be too high and in and, and, and too too uh, too heavy of a water flow. Yeah, yeah, the water is going to be be rushing for those uh, trout fishermen. Hello, Sharon. Hi, Sharon. You're muted, Sharon. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you? Wonderful. I need to run and grab my pad. I'll be right with you. Yeah, it's uh, this is almost on a weekly basis here. We're getting a good storm. This is like this is like Vermont, you know, like Vermont gets like four inches, five inches of snow, like on a every other day basis up there. Yeah, it's pretty impressive, you know. Um, for a while. I was, I was going to Vermont doing some skiing in March, trying to get the end of the season in March. And uh, it's been a while since I've been up there, but uh, this reminds me of Vermont. Um, yeah. they, they could ski all the way into May. Yeah. Um, the way things run up there. And then they have like the whole May, June of like, they call it mud season up there. And um, it takes like two months for that for everything to clear out and dry in July, August, and it's like it's like really their only summer, and it starts back up again. Right. We used to go to the lights to climb. My buddies and I would go up there and climb in the winter time, and uh, then some of my buddies would climb with me, and then they start going. They were going back to ski, and I guess you could ski. Uh, I think it's called the Bowl up at uh, in the White Mountains by Mount Washington. This is huge, real steep um, bowl that is supposed to be just amazing. I mean, it's mm -hmm. really steep and scary because it even has some crevasses in it from the snow as it melts. But just like wow. that, you're 
there'd be snow up there in June. We go up in June, July, June, I should say. Wow. Yeah. Go in, in the bowl, you know. In fact, the last, oh, wow. the last time we climbed it, there was still snow in the bowl, and that was just a year or so ago we climbed it. And I know we didn't climb, but I know it was had to be late June or July we were up there climbing. And there was still snow in the summertime up there? No snow in the bowl, yeah. Wow. Nice, nice and stuff. Oh, Deb. It's our committee members today, huh? Sorry, Sean? We're missing our committee members from the board. I'm sure they're coming on now. Yeah. Yeah, still a couple minutes. They did. I'm over it. <laughs> Are you done with snow, Sharon? Done. I'll have to explain that. We all know what you're saying. <laughs> We're just talking. This is like Vermont, like every day in Vermont, it snows like five, six inches up there. And they so, ski to like May, June. Sharon, so whatever you do, do not go on weather bug uh, on your phone or anything like that because got, it, it doesn't have good news for Saturday and Sunday or even next week. Just ignore it. No break. Looks like a high of forty though coming, and it's gonna disappear. It's gonna disappear quickly. Hello, Deb. Hi. How are you, everyone? Hi. How are you? Had enough of this snow. <laughs> that's for sure. So we do have Debbie. Yep. Hulick. And we're waiting for one more. Mr. Soul? Yes. Which is coming in, but not on that this committee. Right. Hi everyone. Hello. Hi, George. George is coming. Hey Rich. Hey George. Dr. Riker. Good evening, everybody. Hello. So it's 4.33. Um, let, me go, let, me, let me go get Wayne. <laughs> He's upstairs. Okay. <laughs> Wayne. I got him. <laughs> we're, we're all set. All right. So we can, can we have an agenda present and then we can begin. Uh, many members are here. Hello. Hello. So let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, and justice for all. All right. We'll call this meeting to order. Um, Move my screen appropriately. Um, a motion to adopt the agenda for the February 22nd um, with members of the committee reserving the right to add to the agenda and take further action as the committee deems appropriate. So move, Debbie. Second, George. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Make a recommendation to approve the minutes for January 25th, 2021, pages one through three. So moved. Second. 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any no's? The motion carries. Tonight for discussion, um, policies presented by administration, um, all of which are repeal and really, uh, I had a chance to look at each one in detail um, this evening. One being create a position, employment of professional employees, employment of classified support employees, employment of summer school staff, and student teacher intern student um, observers. Um, so let's take a minute and look at policy number 301 together. And I guess the goal of this policy was to remove administration. Um, what I walked away with this policy was that it removes the responsibility from the board and um, heeds to recommendations from the superintendent. So just, let's just look at the wording that the wordsmithing that's um, proposed. So it says positions for administrative personnel and support employees shall be established by the board in order to provide effective man management, leadership, quality educational programs and services consistent with the needs of the district and the resources of, of the community. I don't have any questions there. I don't have any questions on the, the purpose of it. I, you know, the, the, uh, I do have a question on, on part two. Uh, okay, can we just read that aloud so that we could all just reflect on what it's saying? Well, it's where it says, based upon the recommendation of the superintendent and supporting documentation, uh, but shouldn't it also say, but the board does not have to uh, take that recommendation? I mean, it's a recommendation, but we don't, we, it, we don't have to take it, I wouldn't say. So it says the need for creating position shall be determined by the board based on recommendations of the superintendent. Fine. The board reserves for itself the final determination of the number and type of positions, just removing administrative, deemed necessary for effective management of the district. I have no questions about that, that portion. Did you have a question about the authority, George? I think it's a, I just uh, the, I, I would say the final authority still has to be with the board. It is. It still it says that. Okay. Yeah. That I, just want to make sure, I just want to make sure we're all clear. Okay. okay. That's why I wanted to read that aloud because it, it looked at first glance. Um, the initial salary or salary range for new position shall be determined by the board when creating such a position based on the recommendation of the superintendent and the supporting documents. And, and, we, and we now have a committee that does that. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I had, can we go further down? Sure. I know my questions were more so on the next policy, but I just wanted to see if there was anything else in this one. Supporting data and other rationale relevant. I think that's great to take out annually because it really is as it, it becomes transparent. You know, I, I do have a question. The, um, is it the superintendent's responsibility to maintain up-to-date position descriptions or is that something that lies within the human resources department for the um, district? Human resources. So do we really need to state the superintendent or can we just say that the... Um... It, says it's it says it's designee, so I figured that would be human yeah. resources. The committee has often added and wanted to add or designee there. So that would cover that, Sharon. Okay. I have no further questions on this policy. Any other questions by the committee? Yeah, Sharon. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure I understand the language here. Position descriptions, is that a reference to a job description? Yes. Yes. 
Okay, I'm just, just not used to the word position descriptions. Human resources traditionally uses simply job descriptions, but as long as there's a, an understanding, that's all. Any other questions or clarity for policy number 301? Creating a position. Let's move forward to the next policy, please. Employment of professional employees. Can we go to the top? Just because I'm writing, I just want to reference it. So, does the number change to 404? Taking out the three, is that correct? Jerome, we're consolidating everything into the 300 category, which will now cover and encompass all employees. So these Thank are just you. the three, four, and fives being all condensed into 300. Understood. So 304. I think you explained that last time. Thank you so much. No problem. We're taking out professional and just put employees, and we're focusing on employment of professional employees. That's a tongue tw twister, right? Employment of professional employees. That would, that would be teachers. <laughs> we fall under professional employees. I have no th questions in the first portion. That's in front of the screen. I'm not sure if anyone else does. No. Move down just a little bit. So it says, I'm going to look at this for guidelines and just read it aloud. Approval shall be normally given to the candidates for employment by the by the superintendent or designee. Employment, that doesn't read, not reader friendly. Let me read it again. Approval shall normally be given to the candidates for employment recommended by the superintendent or the designee. When any recommended candidate has been rejected by the board, the superintendent or designee shall repost the position. They also have to notify the candidate, right? So this is a failed search? Right. No, this is a failed approval of a recommended candidate. So, so who, who informs the candidate? Who what? It doesn't have to be in this. When I would follow up with the candidate, if that were the, the desire of the school board when voting on that recommendation, I would then notify that uh, candidate. Okay. Approval shall normally be given to the candidates for employment by the superintendent or designee understood so when any recommend, random, recommended candidate has been rejected by the board, the superintendent or designee shall repost the position. I understand, I understand that part, but what about, right? what about the candidate? Who, who tells the candidate that they, they, they have not, the board did not uh, follow the recommendation? Mr. Zoll just answered that, that he would do so. Okay. Right. I know that. Deborah, I couldn't hear what you were saying. Uh, my question is to see, see when something like that happens, is there a procedure in place where a letter goes out, either yes, you were approved or, and you start, or no, you were not approved? Thank you for applying. On the occasions where they are approved, our office is following up to, to finalize all the onboarding paperwork with that candidate. If it's an individual that the board should not accept the recommendation, uh, then I'm, I'm reaching out and, and communicating with them and calling them. So you know what, it just as a formal process, just a recommendation to always put that in writing. <clears throat> you know, even if it's, you know, sorry, we've identified a better candidate. But I think sometimes that phone call um, is not necessary, not to say it's not clear, but I mm -hmm. think it would be a good practice for us to follow up in writing saying we've selected a candidate more suitable for our needs. We, we can add that into the process, but I don't know if at that point in time, 
the board has a, a recommended candidate because uh, to that section in the in the uh, policy, if if they're not accepted, or or in this case, if the candidate has been rejected, right. we're, we are then reposting the position, so we don't have another another candidate to offer right there. So think about it like this. Let me give you an example. So we just had a recent position where we had um, a, a subset of employees apply for a position. None of those employees um, in the original posting made, made the cut. So the position was reposted. None of those employees were informed that they didn't make the first cut. Uh, it was just reposted and they had the ability to reapply. Um, without any change to the job description, what I'm trying to just instill is that once the first wave of the interview process and the employment process is concluded and the person is not going to be granted an offer and the board you know, has acknowledged that, we should send something in writing. And I think if we did, if we did that type of practice, it would avoid us from being in um, the situation where we just recently had the same people apply for the same job with no change. We can certainly add that as, a, as another step uh, when an employee has been re rejected. So we certainly can add that piece into it. I think that would be great. Any other thoughts on that um, for the other board members? No, I agree with, I agree with you, Sean. We have to let, let the person know, yeah. yeah Administration, you okay? With yeah. that. Well, I'm, I'm fine with that. I think that makes great sense. The only, the only thing I want to just clarify between what you may be saying to some degree and what this policy is saying, this, what you're saying is absolutely correct. This policy is speaking to an employee who appears on a board agenda. They've gone through the interview process, the whole they've been selected as the candidate for the position and the board that has elected not to hire them. So you are correct. I just want to make sure everyone right. understands the difference between this policy is not the, the interview process, but the hiring process. No, thank you. That helps. Thank you. Yeah. Well, the, the interviewee needs to be made aware that they are not hired until it's board approved. We I all think, agree with that. I think that's I think that's where the we had the issue before, uh, or the misconception before, uh, and, and that's where we got our in hot water. Yeah, we we agree with that. I just wanted to clarify that this is this is not that piece of the of the hiring <laughs> practice. This is the actual piece where the recommended candidate has been placed on the agenda for the board and the board has rejected that candidate as the person to employ. So- Yeah, yeah and, and that person beforehand has to realize that she is not, she or he is not officially hired until the board approves. Yeah, I agree with that too. And I think what would be helpful here at the tail end of this is just saying that upon the board's decision, um, kind of not to move forward, the candidate will be notified in writing. Agreed. Yeah. Also to that, uh, all, all the candidates that I uh, speak with in, in a follow-up interview after they've been recommended to uh, human resources, uh, my communication to them verbally at that time is they would be the recommended candidate, you know, to the school board pending approval. Uh, so again, the other step would be when it's rejected, obviously I'm going to notify them. But then like Sharon, you pointed out, that would then also now be followed up with something in writing as well. Can we add that to the actual policy, to this policy? I already have a, a stab at Thank this. You. Uh, thank you. I, and I, here, I'll read it to you. Okay. So, sticking with that paragraph, when, an, when any recommended candidate has been rejected by the board, the superintendent or designee shall repost the position and the rejected candidate will be notified in writing. Perfect, perfect. Sounds good. Good. Okay. I don't know if anyone else had questions regarding any of the other um, paragraphs in front of us. I didn't. This is what, this is 404 or 401, uh, 301. 
We're talking about four, 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 four right? Yeah. Correct. We're on 404. Um, why did we take right out the guidelines? Yeah, I had a question on page three. Why did we take out that last paragraph? Jeff, can you move down just a little bit? George, that was a repeat. <laughs> yeah, that's on page two as well. That's why it's okay, page two. Two. Oh, okay, I'm trying to see where on page, I read this, but. Right, it was on page three, but it's also on page two, George. So it was just repetitive. So we're just removing oh, okay. it. So. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, actually where it is. We got it. I thought I read them both as slightly different, but okay. Are there any other questions regarding policy 404, employment of professional employees? Can we move to the next policy? Brown? Yes. On this, on this one, reading down in the same paragraph that we just added the sentence about the follow up letter, mm -hmm. can we add the record uh, revision to this paragraph? The approval shall normally be yes. given. I already did. Thank you, Debbie. Yes. Thought you would. Can you um, scroll down? I just wanted to see further the list of qualified, uh, excuse me, classified support employees. by the board the superintendent. So we're gonna add that on the bottom. Okay. I have no further questions. I'm not sure about anyone else. Can we just scroll down a little bit? And we're gonna add that. So we, what do we classify study hall monitors today? What are they? They're paraprofessionals. Okay. Okay. This is basically anything but the professionals, right? Yes, all classified support. I don't know if we can put in case we forgot something. I don't know if we can put that in there or not, or or we just want to leave the list and say et cetera. <coughs> can we scroll back up to the list? Thanks. This uh, information here aligns uh, specifically with the current uh, support staff CBA. So that's why you see cooks added alongside the workers, study hall monitors we no longer have uh, as a position. And you see the adjustment with the IT and the uh, business office personnel. Okay. How about, how about pupil services personnel? Do they have secretary one, two, and three now, or just is it just secretaries? They just have uh, secretary assignments. Because we used to have two, uh, we used to have different levels, didn't we, Steve? Well, you, you, ha you have secretaries, but then if you're also thinking of the confidential administrative assistance, that's sort of it, its own, they have their own uh, agreement uh, with the board. Okay, are, are they on this list? The, uh, the confidential uh, administrative assistants are not included on this. They're not part of the support 
uh, bargaining agreement. So where would they be in? Under professional, correct? 304. Well, professionals, like we said, were teachers. Where would that fall, Steve? They would they would probably be uh, included with the the administrative or the professional. Well, we need to put them someplace. Right. They currently have their their own agreement with with you as a board. Okay. So, so we don't. Do we have to have a policy for them and the, uh, for them also? I didn't know that we had a, a different agreement. I think your professional one that you just did would cover that, George. Um, if you notice in that in that policy that you just reviewed, there is no list of everyone that falls under that classification, which would include all professional employees, in, including administration. So um, I don't I don't think you have to have a separate policy. For that, I, I, I do. I agree with you, Billy, on that. I just think we have to add uh, their their titles into that this policy, just so it's clear to everybody uh, that they're not standard secretaries; they're confidential uh, employees. But George, if you think about it, this particular um, policy is strictly for the CBA, the classified support employees, and what Dr. Riker is saying that the um, administrative um, clerical or secretaries fall under the, the previous policy we just looked at, which would be the administrative. I think, I think, but to, to keep the confusion down for future boards and all, we have to state that uh, in writing in that policy. I, I agree with you, it should belongs in that policy, but it, sh it should be stated that they particularly are in that policy. Um, if you think about it though, if we look, can we go back up to that policy? If you think about it, we really aren't naming any titles in this policy. It really is. Um... We, we've had some issues in the past mm -hmm. on uh, people, people in uh, uh, pupil services. And if, if, they're, if they're, we have confidential secretaries, I would like it, I would think, it's, and it's not up to me, but I would think we'd want to stipulate that in the that they're part of the professional employees group, so that we don't have somebody saying at a later time, well, uh, they should be in the uh, support group, and and it doesn't say anything where they are. So I I'm just saying to keep the clarification, we we just put it in there and say this is the group they're in. I, I don't see how hard that 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 would be. I hear you. Um, my question is, if if we do that, they do we... have a separate. Sorry. Go ahead, Doug. I'm I'm sorry, Sharma. There there is a separate. They have a separate contract. The administrative assistants. It's it's different from the support staff, as well as our first level supervisors have a separate contract. I have a question. If we looked at that contract, does it reference these policies at all? I hope so. so but but both, if, even if they have separate contracts and the the uh, district uh, supervisor or whatever have a separate contract, they they have to fall in one of the in one of these categories: uh, empl you know, uh, employment of professionals or uh, employment administration or employment of support. So we, 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 to keep the confusion down so everybody knows where to look, uh, I, would, I, th I would think we'd have to stipulate this is where you find these people. Or this is what, this is the, this is the uh, policy that they, uh, that they're under. Can we clearly delineate under this policy, 404, those um, employees that fall under it, just as we did in the um, policy we were just looking at, 404.1? That's what I think we should do. Because I wouldn't know who else should be. I'm a little there, so on this because we don't follow the support staff. I'm sorry. Deb, can you repeat what you just said? I can't sure. you. And it means to step over you. I'm an assistant, follow a little bit of professional as well as some of the administrative contractors. It's a totally different animal somehow. So I don't know if we actually fall under here. 
I don't think they would because I think that you have a hybrid. I said the admin assistants, our contract actually follows partially the professional staff as well as some aspects of the, administ uh, the administrative uh, contract. So with the Act 93, we have a little bit of both. We don't really follow the support staff CBA. This is my recommendation. Can we get a, a, a list of clear delineation as to where people fall in terms of, you know, administrative, supervisory, CBA, so that we know what policy to reference if, if there is an opportunity? Because right now we're, we're talking about it and it's, um, it's not crystal clear who falls under what. Where would we be able to get clarity on that? I understand it's a contract, but does that contract reference how does that contract correlate to the actual policy? I guess that's what I'm Debbie's, wa Debbie's waving her hand. Debbie? Uh, I would think that they should, because they are a hybrid uh, position, that it may require creating a policy that applies strictly to that particular position because they are a blend of both and they do have their own contract with the district. It may be something we could uh, ask for to be created between now and uh, maybe next month. And I do have a question. I think that's a really good point, Debbie. So what would those employees be titled? Is it, uh, they're in between two, like where would they fall? We, we, we could also take a look at each of their uh, current agreements Mm -hmm. and make a determination where actually maybe we put language in those agreements as to for such and such policy, or in this case, policy 404, they would be identified as, you know, whether support or professional. So we could look at putting that language in, in the, uh, the agreement itself. I think that would be helpful because that way we, you know, even if it's not directly in the policy, we have something to reference and we know where it falls. Yeah, some, and, some, to, some to clarify so we know where to look uh, if we have an issue and we don't get finger pointing. I agree. Yeah, that's all I'm asking. Can I, can I ask a question? What, what would actually change if you included those people under the new proposed 304? Because I'm not convinced uh, the requirements or the parts of that particular policy really would change depending on a secretary, whether they're, uh, um, what are they, Steve? They're uh, confidential or not. They're Dr. Vitulli, I don't think it would change. It would just, no, it would just give it a home for us. So we would know exactly where, but it, I don't think anything else would change. Would, this particular group of employees fall under policy 404, the following a list. I agree. I think we could put a list together for that new 304 to include any other classifications within the district. As you'll notice on these policies, none of them reference CBA as they wouldn't, right? So, so the CBA really isn't driving the policy. It's the policy that dictates that. So I think uh, the idea, Sharon, of having a list on this policy 304 just clarifies that for everyone. That's that's all I that's all I would like to see is clarification. I agree with yeah. you. So we can use the same language as in the the subsequent policy on classified support, and just put that line in there, and then list all those classifications. I think that would be perfect. Yeah, the CBA isn't really going to speak to employment of to that degree as your policy would. So we can bring it back to you if you want with that list added in. That would be great. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions regarding this policy? And if not, we can move forward to the next. We're just saying, does he need that? Hasn't changed anything up? 
pretty straightforward there, eh? Yep. So these are professional employees, employment of summer, just employees, employment of school staff. Perfect. Can we move down just a little bit just to see what should be? Hmm. Yeah, I have no problem with that. It's me either. It's just changing that that we're now allowing designee to, you know, to. It's the same thing with the uh, you know, four or seven, I think. Can we move further down? And just the policy number. The policy number is just changing from 406 to a 306. Right. Correct. And we're putting in the way designated. Yeah. I think we can move forward. Can I just see the title at the top? So now this is, this is the same one we were just on. I don't think we had any additional questions. Can we go towards the bottom other than the designee and the number change? Is that the end of the policy? And then the next one's just summer, and there's no change except for the number. Yeah, it's all it is. Number, correct. So let's look at employee, student, teacher, slash interest, intern, students. Number change. That's it. Perfect. So it sounds like the only one that we're on. Um, for the two where we were just going to add the additional statements regarding the... Um, I guess they'll have to come back. Uh, the statement regarding the um, that the employee would be notified after the board's um, rejected. So it sounds like, can we go to the original agenda again? I think since we've looked at each of the policies in, for, in front of us, I just wanna wrap my arms around what the 301 is moving forward. 304 is gonna be brought back to us. Uh, with the uh, recommended statement after the board, um, a board rejection that the, the individual will be notified. Employment 304 of support employees. The 304.1 will be come back to us. Right, that'll come back. 306, um, no change. So we're moving 301, 306, and 307 forward. Right, yes. I think you can move, I'm just saying, I think you can move 304.1 because all you're adding is that line regarding that any rejected candidate would be notified in writing. And the so committee, you're gonna post it? The committee agreed with that, so we can post it with that. 304 is the one that I think you wanted back because you want a list. Okay, that's fine and I could live with that. 301, 304. 4.1, 306. The reason I said 304.1, since we're doing 304, I would think we'd want to keep 304.1 with 304. There are two separate policies. Two different different groups of people, yeah. Okay. Remember the 304.1, we agreed that we were going to identify those those additional employees that fell into that space that is just not clear. Okay. We understand. Are there any other questions regarding the policies we've just reviewed? No. If they're not, we're gonna move forward to the public participation portion of the meeting. Um, the public will have three minutes to ask any questions regarding the policies that we've reviewed today. Are there any public comments? I don't see any, Sharon. Perfect. Moving forward, um, advising you recommendation, motion to authorize and direct the administration to post policy 301, 306, 304.1, and 307 um, for review. So moved. 
Perfect. Any other questions before we adjourn? Sharon, I just want to clarify, it should be 301, 304, 306, and 307. We're going to hold 304.1 back, correct? No, 304. Oh. You're holding the other way around? Wait, we're going to hold 304.1. It should be 301, 304 moving forward, 306, and 307. 304.1, we're holding back for revision. That's why right. you just we just said we're going to keep 304 back for revision and right. not move 304. And we're going to do 304.1. That's a question I just asked. Right. Remember, 304.1 has the list. 304 does not. Okay, so we're holding back 304. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So 301, three, I just want to be able, let me just write that down for one moment. Bear with me. No problem. Thanks for the clarification. You're welcome. All right, perfect. If there are any, uh, aren't any other questions, can we have a motion to adjourn? So yeah. moved. But we just need a motion. I'm sorry, we need the motion first to move those forward. A uh, motion to move motion. forward. Motion. Okay. Second. Second. Debbie. Debbie. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. See you on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Bye -bye. We're between us. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I guess we'll see each other at 5.30. Okay. Okay. Have well, a good night. The roads are okay, right? So, so. Hopefully it's going to stay warm. I think it is. Yeah.